This is uh, the optics above the umbilicus. This is the uh, fi a five millimeter trocar for the operating instrument for the introduction of the mesh. This is the, the optics, a five millimeter optics. We always use a five millimeter optics. Sometimes, many times, we use a three millimeter optics because uh, these uh, mini optics are enough uh, for uh, this kind of procedure. And uh, this other one is a three millimeter trocar. And Vito, would you, would you, would you speak to us, please? Prova, prova. Passa di qua un momento, va. Eh, do you see? I'm using the laparoscopic camera, the HD of stores, as see, you perfect. have seen this. We also, the outside picture in air is quite good. You see here, prendi. Dammi la vicina. This is the ureter. I already uh, put two stitches which are proximal, and now I'm using a, a, an eight French piece of a So I know which is my lumen, and now, dai, dammi il punto. And now I'm, so I have two stitches proximal and one stitch distal. And at this point, once this is fixed, it's quite easy to do two, two running sutures. The stent is just temporary because I'm not going to leave the stent here. Mosquito qui, e mosquito qua, e taglia. It's, I must say, it's a new experience to be able to use the, uh, the laparoscopic camera for outside surgery in air. Slightly interfering with my position, but it will be okay. The little stand is used only for the first stitches and then it's not useful anymore because the only place where you can have a stricture is at the beginning of the, of the suture. So with three or four passages And then we we tie this suture, this thread, attention, beside the can. With the original stitch. Of course, this can also be done with laparoscopy, but I think that uh, it's better. Passo di sopra, passo di qua. 
And now I'm doing the same thing with the other suture. No. Nada, chulo. Scusate, eh? Questo. Uito, we can switch to Dr. Santoro. Dr. Santoro. Okay. okay. Do you hear Santoro, me? Do you? Okay. Yes. Okay. Explain I us. I did the, the peritoneal incision. Pulisci mi la punta. Okay. In the standard fashion, you see, I started a few centimeter above the inguinal ring. Uh, two centimeter laterally to the umbilical uh, to the inguinal ring, and uh, then I arrived uh, to the attention sì, to the lateral uh, umbilical, umbilical ligament. Okay, then I dissected a little bit uh, of the lateral aspect you see here, and uh, a little bit of the medial aspect, uh, the medial fossa, okay? This is the sac that I'm going to reduce, but before to reduce the sac, I have prepared the median fossa and prepared the uh, Cooper ligament and uh, the uh, transversalis fascia is here, okay? Here there is the direct hernia that uh, is not uh, uh, present in this case. And you see, this hernia is, uh, uh, I confirm that is uh, a, a crural hernia because uh, uh, the, the hernia is uh, below the inguinal ligament that is here, okay? So this patient has a double hernia and uh, probably if uh, uh, this kind of hernia uh, has been done uh, uh, by open uh, uh, surgery, maybe uh, there is the possibility of uh, an immediate uh, recurrence. We call a pseudo recurrent. So I'm going now to reduce this sac. How is the, the view in the, in the room? Nice. <coughs> okay. This is the sac. Okay, this is the, the, the spermatic cord. Okay. And this is the sac. Are you, are you listening to us? Uh, Professor Panzadoro, yes. Yes. Do you see now the anastomosis? Okay. Yes, we do. We see. Okay. No. I'm going on the other side to do the right hand side anastomosis. Can we switch to Dr. Santoro? Allora. Dammi, dammi un coso. La regia ci può <coughs> collegare con la sala del dottor Santoro? Ok, do you hear me now? Yes, And, we hear. Ok, so this is the sac. I'm going to reduce the sac, you see? This is the sac. It's a long sac. 
and uh, we are going to reduce the sac and uh, dissect it from these that are the uh, spermatic vessels and now I'm going to show you the deferent, okay? I think this hernia is uh, very similar to the hernia that uh, Professor uh, Duluc operated. Same uh, indirect hernia, okay? I'm going to finish the dissection. It's very important now to check for deferent, okay? If you have some question during this part, I can answer. I know it's also different. Okay. This should be the sack. Just a second to check in the other part. Okay. Can you come closer? In, uh, during the, the, this kind of procedure, when you have uh, a direct hernia, it's very easy. I think this is the different, okay? No, no, credo. Okay. Different? Eh? Okay. We have to be sure. I, okay, that is the different, and that is the, fin the end of the sack. Okay? Okay, different vessel. Okay, this is the sack. We have to prepare uh, three, four centimeters below uh, the inguinal uh, ring. I mean, from here, we have to prepare till here, because uh, uh, if you don't prepare this part, uh, it's very, uh, the incidence of hernia is high, of hernia recurrence. So now we have reduced the sac, all the inguinal uh, uh, indirect sac, okay, you see? Now we are going to work on the crural hernia, okay? The very important advantage of this uh, approach is that you can uh, uh, check all the site of hernia and you can repair all kinds of hernia. Okay, you see? This big uh, crural hernia that is very unusual in a man. Uh, in my experience of recurrent hernia repair, I repair a lot of uh, uh, pseudo recurrence. I mean, uh, was a patient operated by open surgery who had a recurrent, a recurrence, and uh, uh, most of them were sent by. Uh, other surgeon and uh, during laparoscopic uh, exploration uh, I found that they did a good job in the inguinal uh, uh, region but uh, the recurrence was a crural recurrence so you see okay This is a good surprise, especially for this conference. Because you understand why hernia repair can be considered superior for some aspect to the open repair. Laparoscopic repair, yes.
I try to be very clean, okay. Go inside. You see the view with 5 mm uh, optics is very good. I'm doing now color resection too with the 5 mm optics without any difficulties. Okay. I always prepare a few centimeters below the, um, the Cooper ligament so I can put the mesh. Okay. So now preparation is uh, almost finished. You see? So usually it takes 10-15 uh, minutes. It's always better to prepare more than less. So we have the enough space to put the mesh. Okay, go up. Do we have, if you have a question, I can answer. So now we are preparing the upper part of the peritoneum. So I think this approach is easier. Anatomy is much, much easier. And the learning curve is shorter than tap. OK. I have almost enough space to put the mesh. Sorry. OK. OK, that's enough. It, at the beginning, it's difficult to understand when the preparation is enough uh, and when it's not enough. Usually, I repeat, it's better to prepare more because uh, when you have put the mesh, it's more difficult to uh, go back and prepare more. OK? Can you, can you have your lens cleaned a little yeah. more? Yeah, sorry. Aqua. Aqua Galda, see? Just a second. Focus. Do you see now? Okay. Thank you very much because your yes. demonstration, so demonstration is superb, so it's a pity to miss okay, it. Okay, so let's see the anatomy, okay? Just a second, because I think that uh, hernia repair is not indicated, uh, laparoscopic hernia repair is not indicated for all kind of hernia, but uh, I think that every surgeon has to know how to perform also laparoscopic hernia repair, because uh, in some cases uh, it's much, much better. And uh, so let's see the anatomy. This is uh, spermatic vessels. This is the deferent. I always prepare one, two, three, four centimeters below the inguinal ring. This is uh, Cooper ligament. And this is the recurrent hernia, the um, crural hernia. Bego the crural hernia is comprised between the inguinal ligament that is this, show, show, okay, and Cooper ligament, okay. And this is the big. Uh, external, ob oblique, external, uh, indirect hernia, okay? So we have to put the mesh. Uh, putting the mesh, we cover this uh, defect, this defect, and also the medial aspect, the medial part, the medial fossa, okay? It's very important to put the mesh uh, four centimeters below a, uh, and four centimeters up, okay? So in 10-15 uh, minutes, we can uh, do the, the preparation. So now I'm going to put the mesh. Can I have the external uh, view? Can you open, uh, turn off the light? And turn on the light, please. OK. And can I have the mesh, please? I want to show you the mesh that I use. Luce di sala, per cortesia. Can you see me? OK. This is a mesh different from what uh, Dr. Duluc used. It's a polyesteric mesh. It is a more soft mesh. It's not prolin, that is uh, uh, tough. 
and uh, this mesh have this uh, uh, stitch uh, that uh, permit to have this uh, uh, um, a cigarette shape, okay? You see? Now I have to introduce the mesh uh, in the abdomen. I have only 5 mm and 3 mm port, tieni così. So, I do li like what do we do in... Uh, uh, what we do in... Um, uh, for... Uh, yes. Can you see? For the drainage. Okay. You see, it's not difficult. The mesh go inside. So we don't need a, a 10 millimeter trogger, but uh, a 5 millimeter trogger is enough. Can I change my gloves, please? Okay. Give me this one. So do you have the inside uh, image? Yes. Okay. So let's see how is comfortable using this mesh, the procedure. Okay, the mesh should position it in the right way, in the right position. You see, this is the medial border of the crural uh, defect, so I have to be two, three uh, centimeter uh, medially, okay? And uh, let's see the, the lateral aspect of the other defect is here. So this is the right position. So now we start to open the mesh, and then just a second, just a second, just a second, non tirare. Okay, go. Okay. That's okay. The mesh is positioned. Okay. Okay, it's very important here to now to position the mesh in the correct uh, way. So let's see, uh, come in, come in. Okay, this is the crural defect, so I have to be at least uh, two centimeters below the uh, Cooper ligament, okay? Then I have uh, here at least uh, three, four centimeters. Okay, let's see laterally. Okay, this is the lateral defect, the internal ring, so I have here other three, four centimeters. I can put the mesh just a little more laterally. Okay. For with transabdominal approach, we work in a very comfortable way. Okay, and you see here we have a four or five centimeter uh, below. Okay, can I have the, the glue? Uh, sometimes some surgeons don't fix the mesh. I prefer to fix the mesh. Uh, in uh, the first uh, of my experience, I use uh, clips, but uh, uh, with uh, glue is uh, very... Okay. Vieni vicino. Okay. You see, I can uh, fix the mesh in the, this part where it was. Uh, uh, it is impossible to put clip because here we have uh, uh, femoral vessels, so we cannot put the, the clip. So here we are in the Cooper ligament the pubis, and now I have fixed the lower part, then I'm going to fix the upper part. Okay, come closer. Okay. Okay. C'è meglio un altro po'? Un altro la scongiata? Yes. Ah, uh, no, sì. Ok, vede, sì. Il 
Tu dici? No, no, grazie. Do you see two millimeter of uh, uh, glue is enough and the mesh is fixed? Okay? Just mi dai l'aspiratore? Poi smetti. Did you see? Okay. Do you see the anastomosis on the Perfectly. right side? The head of the patient, uh, of course, is. Uh, from where the camera is and now I'm doing the anastomosis without stenting I'm helped by Dr. Martini and Dr. Scarpone, my co-workers since many, many years, and uh, my nurse is Irene Cerulli, who is doing very nicely, as usual. She was able to work very well also with Dr. Gill, even if she already operated with him in 2003 and 2004, so they know each other. So I did the cranial part of the anastomosis. Lostentino. And now I'm doing Yes, Portaghi, 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 che ti sono distraendo. Uh, so, four more passages on this side, but the first passage will be with the, with the stent inside. The patient has a very, very good diuresis. The urine output is good. Here, here. Bello, bravo. I did it also a few times in laparoscopy, this anastomosis. But since we have to take out, we have to make an incision to take out the bladder and to construct the, the new bladder. Hai un po' di tissue, this is the new bladder, this is the stitch that I put to find easily the site of the uh, new bladder and urethra anastomosis. Adesso facciamo, no no, facciamo questo, dammi... 
Dammi una pinza, una pinza. No, no, una pinza da mandare a, dentro il troga. Sì, va bene. Attenzione, più corta. Più corta. Non, non giro. Una Kelly è sufficiente. We put the Kelly inside the trocker. We follow outside. Quello corto, qui piccolo, sì. Qui. And then we bring the, this uh, catheter. And then we introduce the catheter inside the new bladder. Eh, punti per chiudere. Sì. Punti per chiudere. E now we suture. Gonfia pure a 5. Dammi da gonfiare, da gonfiare. Eh. Ma busta se c'è. Ah sì, no. Ok? Sì, adesso mi sono qua. Ok, we inflate the balloon. Punti. Vieni questa, no? Vieni che la pulisce. If we can have the laparoscopic image, it's very important to to put the first stitches on this side. This cystostomy is a safe Please. Mi dai la linea? Just a second. Do you hear me? Vincenzo? Yes. Yes, we, okay. we, we see you have finished okay. your procedure. I have Many finished. compliments from me and from all the audience. I'm closing the peritoneum with these stitches. Thank you very much. It's very important in this uh, uh, technique to close the peritoneum very well because uh, this avoids important complication. You see, this is a running suture with monofilament uh, going back and forward and with uh, extra corporeal knots. Okay. Caesar, please. Did you use monocryl? Uh, no, this is PDS. This is a PDS and... Uh, sorry. Okay.